Center teaching mathematics for over three decades to high school students and college students and though continuity and differenti differentiability is in vast topic the formulas here are very few so here are the formulas in a nutshell for you the function f is said to be continuous at a with limit as extending to a f x equal to f a and f is also continuous at a with limit as extending to a to the left of f x equal to limit as extending to a to the right of f x equal to f a so when we have minus here, it stands for left hand limit. That means x is approaching a from the left. And when we have plus here, it means right hand limit. That means x is approaching a from the right. Now all polynomial functions and trigonometric functions are continuous at every point in their domain. Composite of two continuous functions is also continuous. That means if I have x and mod x, x is continuous, mod is continuous, so mod x becomes continuous. What about differentiability? f is said to be differentiable at a with limit as h tending to 0 f of a plus h minus f a by h axis. This limit is called the derivative of f at a denoted by f dash m. And likewise, just as we had left hand limit for continuity and right hand limit, we have right hand derivative of f at a which is limit as h tending to 0 to the right f of a plus h minus f a by h. So this is when you have to calculate when lesser than a or greater than a. Similarly, left hand derivative of f at a is limit as h tending to 0 to the left f of a plus h minus f a by h. And again, if f is differentiable at a, then right hand derivative of f at a equal to left hand derivative of f at a. So just as for continuity, the left hand and right hand limit have to be equal. For differentiation also, the right hand and left hand derivative have to be equal. Every differentiable function is continuous. Now coming to inverse trig functions, derivative of sine inverse x is 1 by root 1 minus x square and derivative of cos inverse x is minus 1 by root 1 minus x square. So both are similar. Only for sine inverse x, you have a plus 1 by root 1 minus x square. For cos inverse x, you have a minus 1 by root 1 minus x square. Again, derivative of tan inverse x is 1 by 1 plus x square. Derivative of cot inverse x is minus 1 by 1 plus x square. Again, both are similar. For tan inverse x, you have plus. For cot inverse x, you have minus. Then you have derivative of sec inverse x is 1 by x root x squared minus 1 when x greater than 1. Derivative of cosec inverse x is minus 1 by x root x squared minus 1 where x greater than 1. There is a minus here. So again derivative of sec inverse x and cosec inverse x are similar. Only for sec inverse x you have plus and cosec inverse x derivative is negative. Derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x and derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x log a to the base e. This is same as e raised to x log a to the base e which is 1. Then you have derivative of the x or log x is 1 by x. Then you have parametric differentiation that means if x is, a way, is equal to xt, that means x can be expressed as a function of t, y can be expressed as a function of t, then dy by dx is dy by dt in, by dx by dt. What happens if x is a function of z and y is a function of z, then dy by dx becomes dy by dz by dz by dx by dz. Again, dy by dx is the rate of change of y with respect to x. So this is an application of derivatives formula. So that concludes the basic formulas for differentiation for class 12 mathematics. I also tutor online. I tutor just differentiation for the entire class 12 syllabus. You can come for tutoring in a one-on-one -on -one or in a group. The choice is yours. I hope this helped in your examination preparation. So thank you.